Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flickering Myth. On this video, we have quite the discussion for you. We are we're diving into a lot within the horror spectrum, within the James Wan world, specifically within the Conjuring universe. My name is EJ Marino. And I'm Tony Barrero. We have quite the... Tony, let's just get into this, bro. We have so much to get into. We have seen The Nun 2, the yes. latest Conjuring release. We also have The Conjuring Universe. I mean, I think we have the fourth one coming up, I believe. There is, yeah. Uh, officially so, uh, mentioned that at the end of The the Nun, so well, it is on the way. We do get our, our post credit scene as well mm -hmm. in this. So yeah, we have uh, quite a bit of discussion. Uh, I, I will get my... I'm going to lay my cards out very bare for especially James Wan fans. This isn't my personal brand of horror. This isn't, mm -hmm. I, I'm a slasher. I'm a shock horror. I love me a, you know, what's the, what's the term that they use in Scream now? You know, the, oh my God, what's the prestige horror? I guess that's kind of okay. the vibe I'm looking for. You know, I like that whatever we label our A24 jams. Gotcha. Uh, you're coming into this from what I've gathered, newer to horror. What did you yes. think of this film? Uh, specifically the nun two and what's your kind of overview of these specific horrors yeah so i did not grow up watching horror movies at all so i missed out on a lot and i'm kind of playing catch up at this point in my life so i have rewatched every movie in the conjuring universe all nine movies including of course the nun two and i'm actually kind of a fan of the supernatural horror especially when it is tied into real life events as they do with a lot of the conjuring films with Ed and Lorraine Warren and you know their whole uh their their long life of dealing with various supernatural encounters and you know whether as well or not, as scamming people sorry yes. allegedly I don't yeah, want you so, know anyone alleged but yes yeah so you know whether or not you know for me my my personal opinion as far as you know the reality of any of those things I don't yeah. I don't really buy into but it is entertaining and interesting for me to see so as far as the nun two, you know just kind of my overall thoughts on it i thought it was a a pleasant change uh of quality from the original nun movie i certainly don't think it is one of the better films in the conjuring universe even but i think that uh it is a sign that the director of the film is improving as a director I have a lot of questions as to why they pick who they pick to direct a lot of these films in that universe, but yep. um, it does seem that he's getting better, which is always a good thing. Yeah, I would say this is a step up. I really did not enjoy this. I felt it was uh, the same old tricks. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really think these movies have kind of worn themselves thin. I think, you know, looking back, I surprisingly love the other two Annabelle movies we've gotten from the uh, okay. from these universes not that first Annabelle movie lord <laughs> yeah no a mess but I thought Annabelle creation was very very great and then you know David F. Sandberg who went on to do the Shazam movies is a pretty solid director uh and Gary Doberman uh did Annabelle Comes Home another really strong filmmaking mind especially mm -hmm. so I I think I definitely agree with you filmmakers really play a big part and I think it's Michael Chavez who did this who did yes. La La Rona what what did you think of that one actually Oh, La, La, La Llorona is like one of my least favorite movies in the franchise. I think that movie was, it had such great potential because mm -hmm. the the concept of that character, that creature in uh, Central American lore is so fascinating. And I, I, it felt to me as if, you know, they got someone in there at the time, Michael Chavez, who was completely inexperienced in, in directing feature films. And I don't know what occurred behind the scenes, but it it it, it smells of... Uh, studio pressure in getting a film out quickly without allowing uh, enough time for for the script to be developed or for it to be you know directed in a manner that that serves the story. So it it felt rushed. It felt slapped together. Um, the the some of the characters in that film were uh, completely so ridiculous. Some of the decisions that they made were beyond unintelligent. They were. It, it, no no real human would act in those ways it was only to move the story along it felt so um i having michael chavez come off of that and then move on to the third conjuring movie from there what was a massive leap forward um i imagine he probably got a lot more support working on a mainline conjuring film uh and then you know here with the nun too it it felt almost like a lateral move 
from mm-hmm. that third conjuring film for him as far as uh uh his direction with it so again i don't know if he's improving but it's he's certainly doing better than he did with la llorona that's for sure Tony, I I adore you. I have you brought up so many things I want to touch on there. One, the talent I think is better in the Nun two, and I think mm-hmm. that really speaks to Chavez's uh, having better actors. I think mm-hmm. Storm Reed, uh, Taisa Faimiga, you know, I mean Bonnie Aarons as Valak, she is yeah. so good. You know, these are actors who are much stronger than the cast of La Llorona. Not to shade, what was it, Linda Cardellini in that movie? Yeah, I like her. You know, <laughs> and I like her, but you know, it, it just wasn't the right material. And so I, I definitely think right. right actors help him out. Same thing with The Conjuring. Uh, mm-hmm. And something else you brought up, you, you talked about studio mandate, studio vibes. You know mm-hmm. what these movies start reminding me of, which money wise, they're very similar. They have a similar Marvel quality mm. to them. It yeah. feels like we have, this is how we make our Conjuring movies. You yeah. as any director can come in, but what I'm going to do is have the formula, the template built out for you. And I definitely think that's something we, we you know, Marvel will spray, you know, I don't want the MCU fans to come yell at me. There is different movies in that yeah. universe, but you know how it is. It's the, oh, this is the template. And I think Conjuring suffers from that a bit. Would you kind of agree? Yeah, and I think too that there there comes a point where so in the Conjuring universe, every single movie has been financially successful, very financially successful I think in a lot two of two billion dollar franchise. This ends yeah. up being now, and so because of that, you have the pressure of pushing out a new film every year. Or in the case of La Llorona, they put out that, and um, I think it was Annabelle Comes Home in the same yes. year. So you're getting one, sometimes two movies a year from the same studio and it's not a very large studio. We're not talking about Marvel. Um, yeah. So to, to have that pressure of pumping out content, you know, it, it's, it can only lead to having less quality in the long run. And, you know, that was part of my issue with um, Annabelle comes home was it felt like they were introducing all of these different, you know, demonic forces. And then all of those are going to get their own spinoff in the future. So it, it felt kind of uh, kind of forced. And I mm-hmm. think that's the problem that they've been running into um, which, you know, a lot of that can be solved by getting better talent behind the camera and, and in front of the camera for that matter. But it, it just feels like they have a budget and a timeline and they're going to hit that no matter what, you know, whether or not the film itself ends up being good. Absolutely. And I, I think that's something to say on the other side of the Wannaverse is the Insidious films. They <laughs> took time. I mean, I really did not like The Red Door this year. So time yeah. did not help that movie. But I, I think that it made it feel less manufactured that's the thing Mm -hmm. you know we we started calling marvel out when there was two movies a year and then a a, a disney plus series we're like all right almost three movies sometimes it felt like it was just chill out with this and i think the conjuring suffers from that a bit i would also say kind of to touch on something i brought on earlier i don't find these movies particularly too scary uh i think the formula hurts them a bit I just saw yeah. The Haunting in Venice, which I can talk about because I'm free from my embargo. I really like that. But the jump scares were so mm. jump scary. And I know it's Kenneth Branagh kind of mocking the Haunted House film, which is what I kind of will label a conjuring a little bit. And right. I, it just doesn't connect with me. Something I enjoyed this year for Schlocky, and I think this is what these movies are missing. These want to be more prestige. I liked the, uh, what was it, The Pope's Exorcist? That oh, movie okay. was banana cuckoo pants crazy. It was. I mean, it it's, was absolutely. It's, it's, it's Russell Crowe, you know, <laughs> yeah. so he's a much different actor. But I, I kind of, I wish these movies would be a bit, and I mean this in the nicer way, stupider. I think sometimes okay. they want to be so polished mm. and so mature that I'm like, get messy. And I, I, I want to see these kind of haunted movies s- spiced up a bit. Right. Yeah, they they do end up falling into a, a bit of a formula, especially with the jump scares. Which I mean, don't don't get me started on jump scares. That that, in, in my opinion, those are uh, some 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 of the worst um, uh, uh, crutches that you can use in the mm-hmm. horror genre is just throwing in jump scares. And you know, that's that's one of the good things that I felt about the Nun too. Not to say that they didn't have jump scares; they certainly did. But when you compare it to the first movie in the franchise, where or in the first Nun movie, where it was almost exclusively jump scares. Yes. Uh, I, I did find that they had more uh, flavors of horror in this movie. You know, there was um, uh, more of more dread, you know, with, with different characters having moments that they, you didn't know if it was uh, whatever was occurring was real or if it was a psychic premonition or if it was a, a something, a trick by the, the demonic force. And so you kind of had this, this dread that you're sitting with throughout, 
throughout the movie when it comes to that, um, you know, and also with uh, allowing you to sit kind of in the discomfort. So it wasn't all just, you know, turn a corner, there's something in your face. It, it, so I, I did feel like they they stretched a little bit beyond that, not to a significant degree that, like I said, I wouldn't consider it to be one of the better movies in the franchise, but certainly better than the original when it comes to that. Yeah, I would say that there is a bit more atmosphere in this film, which mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know what, that's what Chavez has improved on each film, atmosphere. Yes. Each outing has gotten, uh, because that's what the, let's say the more prestige horror films, the more uh, like a hereditary, a, mm -hmm. you know, where there is a paranormal, a may, maybe more otherworldly environment to it, but right. there's that slow burn. You're in a sense of dread. You know, that's yes. what I think these movies need a bit more because sometimes again it feels like bing bang bong let's get through our jump scares let's get through our vague catholic lore my goodness <laughs> i'm starting to go through to sunday school watching some of these movies like that's it's... Uh, i don't want to say it's a religious complaint because i don't really particularly care but there is times yeah. that i'm like should i read the bible before going into a conjuring movie like oh, I, I didn't think i needed this kind of lore homework yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's funny. I was, I was talking to my girlfriend about this movie in particular and how, um, in, in these films, you're having these demonic creatures that are just running amok all throughout the world. And the whole time I'm sitting there thinking to myself, okay, where is God in this? <laughs> like, you know, the, the, yeah. the entire time you're, you're dealing with all of these demonic presences and force and, and they're, and they're, um, doing all these, these, these things like, uh, uh, slaughtering people in, um, uh, various churches and it's like where is the actual where's God? russell crow where's the pope's <laughs> exorcist yeah like... so it's it's just interesting that um they're they're tying it so closely into reality and into a, a real religion and yet not um oh. yeah not yeah and yet not not doing so so it's just uh it's odd and i i get it it's for the sake of the story but i i would like to see if they're going to delve into that to go all the way or 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 just you know don't <laughs> Yeah, I, I would 100% agree. It it yeah. seems tedious where like, again, the Pope's exorcist, not to keep bringing that up, it's just a, um, a newer example. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about the religion in that. Like, I mm -hmm. liked some of the Vatican stuff. I thought I was actually like, oh, I like, you know, the tier, you know, the, that there's that system you have to go through the chain of command. Right. I actually was like, oh, I'm intrigued where this one is just vaguely in the background, but right. somehow so crucial to the plot, especially with the nun movies. I think mm -hmm. the, I know it's literally called the nun Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, it's weird. Uh, where would you rank? I was going to ask you to rank these movies. Where oh. would you rank Valak though, on the terms of our, our spooky people in these movies? Um, okay. our Annabelle's are the, what was a crooked man from number two? Yeah. La Verona. Um, I mean, what uh, Annabelle comes home has everything. There's yeah, literally right. there's like a werewolf in, in there. <laughs> yeah. So where um, would you say Valak is? Not even just this universe in horror. Um, like she's a very, okay. I think, becoming a big figure. I she's very she, recognizable. Yes, and I think that, um, and my memory may not be serving me correctly. I think she was introduced in The Conjuring Two, if I remember yes. correctly. In one of the best, I I will say yes. The Conjuring Two is one of my favorites from these things because mm -hmm. the atmosphere was so Absolutely. good. That introduction of Valak, so good. Yes. And I think upon that introduction, I had her ranked very highly because the character was very intriguing to me. They uh, made it clear that there was a level of danger and, and depth mm. to her character that um, really kind of grabbed me. Then they came out with the first Nun movie and it really didn't do much to serve that character and kind of uh, brought it down a few rungs. And now with this most recent film, it you know, it feels like the character is definitely here to stay. I mean, we we know that the character is here to stay because the character is in The Conjuring 2, which takes place almost 20 years after yes. th this film. Um, but I, I feel like she has been hindered by um, ha having, having her appear in, in these movies. So for me, you know, I, I still find the character very intriguing, but... You know, I I don't I I think it would have been better served if, had we had less. It, it almost feels like, and and maybe that's just because the movies haven't been that good. But you know, when we knew less about her, it was she was far more fascinating and frightening. Do you think we're ever going to get the Bonnie Aaron's movie? You know, with this her as maybe the lead. Get rid of Taisa. Get rid of Storm Reed. Mm. Do we do that at one point? I, I I'm just curious where we go with this character specifically. Like yeah. you said, she's still around, but. 
like a uh, like do? a nun creation movie maybe <laughs> like yeah an and I, you know again bonnie aaron's is a very underrated actress she's kind of like uh harvier botet he, mm. the infamous actor who's always playing creatures and things he was right. just in the the voyage of the last demeter he was in um excuse me what was it the uh the wreck movies and stuff okay i want to see some of these actors get their chance yeah that that would certainly be interesting i don't know based on what we've gotten um of that character's material. origin <laughs> what's that is there even material for it yeah at, at what we've gotten so far of that character's origin it, it almost feels like you know the nun is the 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 image of the nun is really just kind of a a shell that's being used by Valak. So I don't know if um, that particular actress would be something that, or someone that that, that would lead her, her own film yeah. in this world. Uh, I could certainly see something that's more related to the origin of, in fact, I'd be really fascinated to see something with like the origin of Valak and how that, that demon came to earth and, and began to, to, you know, gain all this power and everything. Um, but I don't know if that's the 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 kind of um, genre that we find ourselves in. You know, that feels more like a uh, almost almost like something from uh, Constantine or something, where you're ha you know it, it's a little more connected to uh, the dealings of the angels and demons. And I don't think that's something that we're really exploring in a lot of these Conjuring movies. So I don't know how much closer we're going to get to that. I will say that could save some of these again, because I, I feel like I've I've seen all I can see from my Conjuring universe. And again, I love James Wan. When mm -hmm. that man got to explore with uh, Malignant, mm -hmm. what my goodness. I was just like, oh, I forget James Wan's an incredible filmmaker. Like, yeah. and whatever you would say about Malignant, it's purposely bad sometimes. You know, it's <laughs> Malignant, it's Malignant. It, yeah. It's great. I just love him as a filmmaker. And it just seems like he's checked out of it. It just feels like, you know, I mean, he did get stuck in Aquaman 2 for yeah. still right still. now, you know, still. So <laughs> I just kind of feel bad about it. I just I want to see Juan grow and explore. And I just don't think there's anything left in The Conjuring to do that. Yeah, it, it certainly almost feels like he is hands off with The Conjuring universe at this point. And it, it's, um, you know, obviously he's still listed as a producer and a story credit and all of that for any of the movies that come out. But I don't know how involved he actually is with, with these current movies. And I don't think all. Michael Chavez is the person to lead it to. It, you know, think of the uh the the Star Wars of it. I don't think mm -hmm. Chavez is Dave Filoni. Um yeah. I, I don't think, you know, in th maybe this universe needs a Filoni. They need the yeah. Kevin Feige again. It it could have been Juan. Who knows where he's going to, but I, I, I like that we are, you know, we seem positive on this. We seem like we want the conjurings to be better. Yeah. You know, and I, I these aren't they're not bad again. Conjuring 2 and stands out, I think, and Conjuring 2 and Animal Creation stand out as some of my favorites from it. Mm -hmm. What are your favorites? I don't want you to give you, we you know, you guys can check out your ranking of it on yep. your channel, yeah. but I would like to say, what was your just your favorite? What stands out as one of the best outings? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely putting together my video of, of my full ranking of all the Conjuring Universe films. Uh, my top movies though in the franchise are going to be the conjuring trilogy so mm -hmm. um is i i struggle between number one and number two um i think that a lot of people are going to put the first conjuring film as as their their number one on their list um two was very surprisingly good uh in my opinion i i was and i think i think a big part of it was because of you know, in the first film, it's a much more confined story where it's just involving this family and, you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren. But in the second one, and, and of course, these are based on true stories, so that it, it, it makes it even more fascinating to me. But in the second one, you're dealing with, in the UK, a lot of this story was told in the news. There's a lot of reporters yep. and there are recordings, both video and audio, of some of the things that were going on here. So the scale just feels bigger and more... Uh, frightening because it feels more legitimate, I think, than, you know, oh, there's a house with a, a single family who dealt with some things that, you know, we don't really have any any uh, any other uh, people that observed it. Whereas in the second one, there's a lot more people that are observing these things that are going on. Um, and then, of course, the introduction of Valak and and uh, the, the threat to um, Ed and Lorraine, it, it just felt like the stakes were a lot higher in that yep. second movie. So I so I do kind of waffle between the first and second conjuring being my favorite in in the franchise 
Um, and then from there, it's it's kind of a a, a quick drop off, to be honest. You know, yeah. Uh, the the Conjuring Universe films to me fall in one of three categories: either they are just very poorly made, when you have movies like the original Nun or the Curse of La Llorona, and Annabelle. then you have huh, and that Annabelle, first Annabelle, the first Annabelle. Oh my goodness! And then you have movies that are, you know, passable that that you can get some enjoyment out of, but maybe aren't the best put together. And I think that's the vast majority of movies in in the in the yep. franchise. You know, they're passable. You'll you'll have a decent time watching them if you want to rent them or something like that. But there are really only a couple movies in the entire franchise that I would classify as you know genuinely great movies. And then those are the the first two Conjuring's for me. I one hundred percent agree with everything you say. Again, I I lean to Annabelle Creation as probably maybe in that top category with the rest of them mm -hmm. i think uh that cast is really good lulu wilson is yeah. so underrated in her horror work miranda otto who i just love in other works i don't know i really like that one i think that one stands above some of the other ones and just yeah. because again it has a better filmmaker you know sandberg i do not like his shazam movies especially number two we talked about that in another Ooh. video but yeah you know he in horror especially the man knows what he's doing and i Please return. Much like him and Juan, I know Peter Saffron was just like, mm -hmm. please come to DC. Go back. Go back to the <laughs> horror side, please. Go back. Yeah, uh, I, I, I need that. I need that in the future. Yeah, Annabelle Creation is definitely up there for me as well. I had a, I had a few issues with um some of the some some of the logic with that movie, but that's just, it is. you know it, it happens a lot with horror movies where you know you'll have uh, a demonic force that is chasing you down a hallway. But then it'll just stop chasing you for no reason. <laughs> like, you know, you know. I, I just watched Talk to Me again for the second time. I loved mm -hmm. it. I I started plot holing it the second yeah. time around, and I was just like, no, no, let me exist just in that first it. viewing. Yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. So that that was part of my my issue with Annabelle Creation was okay. Why are you no longer chasing this kid, or why did you yeah. kill this character, but you don't want to kill this? It's it's you know, but you can pick apart most horror movies in that way. You know, if 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 they were truly dealing with a demonic presence, they, they would be able to just wipe out everybody in the house in one go. So it's you have to kind of suspend your disbelief for for a bit. So, um, but all in all, yeah, I think that Annabelle Creation uh, is is a pretty good movie. Annabelle Comes Home, not so much to me. That felt disjointed. It felt like they didn't know what tone they wanted to go with. It, it's kind of know. schlocky. It's kind of the stupidness I said I wanted. You know, from like yeah. what you would get from some of the other like the Pope's Exorcism, Malignant, even. I like mm -hmm. the schlockiness of it, but it is it just the effects aren't great. They go yeah. for too much at one time. It, that one. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, it uh, felt like a like a Goosebumps movie almost at times. And, you know, and I was going to wear a Goosebumps shirt because I do love a Goosebumps. But yeah, that felt the most PG-13, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. We got to discuss The Conjuring. We are obviously going to be back more. We have so many more movies to talk about. I learned you don't watch a lot of horror movies. We mm. might have to turn that into a series of okay. you watching some of the staples that you have not seen. I like that. I like that. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this video. Let me know your favorite Conjuring movie down in the comments below. Do you like the Conjuring 1 or Conjuring 2 more? Where do you rank Annabelle Creation? What did you think of The Nun 2? Share your thoughts down in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in.